the uh, wherever you're watching, it's the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2000 Asian Qualifiers Group B game between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei. Well, there's no doubt about it, folks. When you come to Manila, you have entered the land of basketball. And that's where we are right now, getting ready to watch one of the best supported national teams in the world. No doubt about it, the Filipinos are always the number one story. And it would be some kind of big ask for Chinese Taipei to come in here and get a win today. However, never say never. Already in this group, you can see Philippines uh, had a close one against Japan, and uh, Australia were big winners over Chinese Taipei. Uh, so that's uh, what they have done so far. Obviously, uh, you saw that Australia score earlier today. Uh, that game has already been played, and Australia winning to go to 2-0. So Japan 0-2 after two games. And the question is, uh, will Chinese Taipei be 0-2 after this game, or might they Spring an upset here in Manila. Well, the Philippines are facing, a, a, I think, a, a dangerous Chinese Taipei team, a team that uh, now has uh, a fuller complement of, of players. And uh, we didn't really see in their first game against Australia how dangerous they can be because Australia were just far, you know, far too good for them. But I think probably they will match up better against the Philippines. And uh, some, some players really kind of captured the imagination uh, for Chinese Taipei. And the one that particular uh, that I liked uh, was Chen Kuang Chuang, uh, the young center, the 23-year-old, benching to see if he gets some more time uh, after his performance uh, the other day. So as they call them, uh, Gilas, the Philippines being introduced here to the crowd, including uh, a lot of players that we've seen in the big tournaments in recent times. We saw, remember, Jason Castro, William there, one of the best point guards in Asia. We saw him at the 2014 FIBA Basketball World Cup in Spain. We saw them host the 2016 FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament in Manila. Andre Blatch, he's back with his team and probably makes them better. Uh, in turn, at least certainly gives them a uh, a focal point of their offense, a quality big inside. But um, again, uh, no player is bigger than the team. And uh, we saw the Philippines struggle this summer. They started well at the FIBA Asia Cup, uh, but they were lacking uh, somebody that would just really take control of matters. Anyway, we can talk more about that later. We're going to have a pause in the commentary for the playing of the national anthems. our Philippine National Anthem, classical singer and songwriter, TV5's very own Miss Lara Maige.
Thank you very much. Miss Lara Megan. Well, that was a beautiful uh, rendition of the Philippines National Anthem. Puts us all in that uh, patriotic mood, I guess, especially if you're a Filipino. Well, the time-honored tradition of the players greeting at midcourt has just taken place, play, and also the coaches have just said hello. Now we're taking a peek at the referees for today's game, Ryan Jones, Nicholas Fernandez, and Nan Yi, or Yi Nan, from China. So Nicholas Fernandez on the right, and Ryan Jones there in the middle. And we'll get a look at the rosters, and also we'll take a peek at the starting fives uh, before this game. There's the young man that was uh, so impressive for me the other day against uh, Australia. So, Chao Chun Sun, coach, and uh, you want to look at Cho Pu Sun, Cho. Yi Xiang, uh, number six, uh, was a bit disappointing uh, the other day, and I think he probably has a point to prove in today's game. Their starting five will be Chiang, Cho, Liu, Sai, and Davis. Quincy Davis, and uh, it's interesting that uh, number six, Cho, uh, again, he was disappointing the other day. He's not in the starting lineup today, so it kind of makes you wonder um, if the coach is having a rethink, maybe sending a message. You got to bring something to the team to be in that starting five, or maybe maybe it has more to do with just matchups. Well, Chinese Taipei actually got a win in the Philippines over the Philippines back in 2013 at the FIBA Asia Cup. Here is the roster coach uh, led by. Uh, Coach Reyes, Chot Reyes, uh, June Fajardo, number 15, Jason Castro, Gabe Norwood, and a couple of newcomers that we didn't see at the Asia Cup. I'll tell you about who they are, but there you see uh, Castro, Norwood Wright, Aguilar, and Blatch, Andre Blatch, uh, back with the Philippines uh, for this uh, window, he is in the starting lineup as well. Aguilar, of course, a high flyer. Wright can just shoot lights out. Norwood hailed for his defense. And, of course, Castro, uh, just his overall playmaking and uh, the capacity to hit big shots. Now, Kevin Alas, uh, we did not see him this summer. He's in the Philippines team as well as Ulaine. Malixi. So they will at some point, uh, you would imagine, uh, get into the game. There's Cho, Chun San, the head coach, again running through some uh, last minute preparations. Aguilar always likes uh, putting on that Gila shirt. Wright does as well. So Coach Reyes here to, uh, to lead the way once again for the Philippines. Four years of age is uh, Chot Rays, and five-time PBA Coach of the Year. He was at the helm when they played at the 2014 FIBA Basketball World Cup. And after a spell with Tab Baldwin, uh, the New Zealander at the helm of the Philippines, Chot Rays has uh, come back to be the lead man. Is Andre Blatch.
Well, everybody, we are underway. The Philippines wearing the dark uniforms, Chinese Taipei in the white. They've won the opening tip and are attacking the basket to the right. And already a festive atmosphere here as Liu takes the three pointer and hits it. Right, gets it over to Norwood. Aguilar on the baseline. And Davis uh, fouled as he gets into the lane. So Andre Batch raises Andre Blatch raises his hand to say, yes, I was the man that committed that foul. So Chinese Taipei inbound it with 14 on the shot clock. And the three pointer is off of Quincy Davis. The third gets it, goes up, and the quick jump allows him to get the two points. Blatch for three. That attempt from Liu is off, but Chinese Taipei, another offensive rebound. And Quincy Davis, the third, gets another putback. He was not already on two occasions not facing anything close to the defense that he was facing against Australia. Norwood for three. So the Philippines uh, settling for jump shots and missing right now. Davis wide open hits the three. And it's a 10 to two lead now for Chinese Taipei. Memories of 2013 come flooding back when Chinese Taipei won 84-79 here in Manila. And now Andre Blatch turns it over. And the drive and the basket is good by Tsai. And Chot Reyes decides instead of sleepwalking through this first half, I better wake up my guys. Points in the paint for Chinese Taipei. I, I wanted you to hear what Chot Reyes was saying. And quite frankly, he was like, we're not, we're not respecting these guys. They can, they can score. He said, Quincy Davis is kicking our butts. Somebody's got to get in there and compete. And it's interesting because uh, the last thing in the world you want to do against a team like Chinese Taipei is let them have some confidence. Because now, with a 12-2 lead, they're thinking this is a game they're going to win. And Quincy Davis, that's also a nightmare scenario for the Philippines. He's got seven points. He can feel it. And surely you would think that the Philippines will go inside now. Norwood passes out to right. And Davis reaches in and commits the foul. If I'm the Philippines and right is open anywhere, for a jump shot, I would certainly get it to him and let him take it. But otherwise, I would be doing exactly as uh, Castro is doing there. Jason Castro William driving to the basket because good things will happen. 
And it's not as if Chinese Taipei defensively look like they're ready to get after the Philippines. So they're, those pathways to the bucket are there. Remember these teams are traveling and they've been a long way, you know, in the Far East. So they've had to travel a while. Kind of wonder if they might have heavy legs. Davis hits another jump shot. And it's the biggest lead of the game for Chinese Taipei. And the reach and the steal in the passing lane. And the layup is good from Chinese Taipei's Liu. And it's a 16 to 3 Chinese Taipei lead. Wow. And now the pass from Blatch off the hands of Aguilar. And that was a telegraph pass that Liu knocked away and then uh, Sai gets it back to him and he just lays it up. Abueva. Also Fajardo in the game now. And Davis gets inside. Oh, he almost had an and one coming. So a little bit of a reprieve. Crowd trying to get the Philippines going, but they really are. They, they look half asleep, to be honest. Distinct lack of energy. Abueva drives and fouled by Chiang. Abueva is, if ever there were one, he would be the hard man of Philippines basketball, of, at least of this team. And when I say hard man, I say that as a compliment. I mean, he will get out there and get down and dirty if need be. And Fajardo gets the offensive rebound and put back. So no need to panic for the Philippines. They just have to pick up the effort level. Davis. It's inside and denied. Aguilar calling for the travel, but instead it's another foul. This was at the other end. Fajardo had position. And that time it was Davis who was standing around. And now he's back at the line. Nice release. Quincy Davis the third. Of course, he couldn't play at the Asia Cup. He was hurt. And that was a big absentee. Couldn't really see his importance in the Australia game. They were just uh, completely overmatched Chinese Taipei. Uh, Castro Weems loses it, but Abueva is there. Puts it up. Cho got the rebound. Now Liu over to side. Ball knocked out of bounds. He's open, foot on the line. I do wonder if uh, Davis has the green light to shoot whenever, because he hasn't been shy today. Has hit a couple jumpers, though. Now Fajardo, oh, little Matador defense by Davis. Just goes right past him. 
And Fajardo showing what he's all about now. So that's two fouls as well. I, I don't know what, I mean, that's, that's, that's very bad. You got to move your feet. Can't just reach in there and wrap him up. And, and the disappointing thing for Chinese Taipei is they need him on the floor. So he has to go out. And the three-point play has been committed. However, the good news is, in my opinion now, is that you've got the young man uh, that we were talking about at the start of this telecast or broadcast, Chin, who was so impressive the other day. He wears number 15, 23 years of age. He's in the, on the low blocks. Now he comes up to the line. There he is. He set the pick. Sai gets it back to him. He's going to put up a long one. I like him more inside than out. Fajardo, almost a turnover. Pagoy gets inside. Liu has it, bounce pass, Cho goes up. And perhaps a little too quick on the trigger there for Chinese Taipei. However, they're gonna have possession. Castro not seeing that. Abueva, who touched it last, I think, even stepped out of bounds. So, now this is where he's effective, in my opinion. But he's going up against a very big Fajardo today. From the baseline, Lee misses, and Abueva gets the rebound. Well, Abueva just tried to push off and fell down. And then Chinese Taipei reached in there, committed the foul. So we're just going to take a seat here again, the replay. And you can see uh, Abueva leading with that left forearm. He has to be careful. And he rattles in the first one, Abueva. Second one is good as well for Abueva. So Ravenna comes in for Castro. Chen has it again up high. Not sure he's going to be able to post up for Hardo. Yep, long attempt uh, from Lu. So the Chinese Taipei have gone cold a little bit here. Abueva gets it inside to Fajardo. Full marks to Abueva. He broke into the lane. And just as the defense started to move, and Fajardo went to the basket, Abueva found him. Chance of defense, defense, there's shouts. Now Cho number six is in. And the swat from Aguilar. The pass up ahead to Ravena. And the ball goes back over to Chinese Taipei, but much better from the Philippines. So Chinese Taipei 
burn a timeout here late in the first quarter. No twos for the Philippines yet. No threes, rather. See the bench points, Philippines getting nine. And so that is Fajardo. There's Fajardo. So all the bench points. Well, he's got seven. So it's quite a luxury to have a player of his ilk, of his size. Uh, to bring it to the game. So let's all look at Chin there. But again, uh, he's going up a bigger, going up against a bigger Fajardo. Looks a little lost out there. And now just a needless turnover. And that's about as bad as it gets for Chinese Taipei. You call a timeout, you go out, and you don't even uh, get to run a play. Abueva turns, shoots, misses. Now Chinese Taipei. Lee. Norwood with the rebound. Pass. And the shot is good, a three-pointer, the first of this game for the Philippines. And now they are trailing by just four points. There's Chen and Again, the size of Fajardo seems to be bothering him. Abueva, he finds Ravenna. Oh, keeper Ravenna was getting ready to drill one, but took his eye off the ball. So a minute and a half to go here in the first quarter. Long shot, no good. Norwood with the rebound. And another foul called on Chinese Taipei. getting closer and closer. Misses the second. So a three point lead for Chinese Taipei. And remember uh, Davis picked up the second foul and had to go to the bench.
Cho has it. A little shake and bake. Puts it up. Good. How about that? Well, that came at the right time. That was only a two, but it takes it back to a five-point lead. Norwood over to Ravenna. Keeper Ravenna. Great talent. Here he goes. He gets the pick. He looks to shoot, and he drills it. Keeper Ravenna. And the drive and the layup is good for Chinese Taipei. Ravena again off one foot. And that is how it finishes. So it's 23 to 18 Chinese Taipei on top of the Philippines after one. So those are the numbers for the Philippines and Chinese Taipei. And uh, you almost wonder really if uh, Chinese Taipei have kind of uh, let a, a golden opportunity go by because, I mean, they were building a considerable lead there, but then kind of wasn't too impressed by the D that, you know, Quincy Davis had been outstanding offensively, but kind of gave away a couple of uh, cheap fouls. And here he was shooting the three-pointer. Blatch hasn't, did not have a good start to this game, including uh, that turnover there. He ended up being taken out of the game. The starters, when they were out there, they didn't get it done for the Philippines. It was only when the introduction of June Marfa Hardo uh, that coincided, and also Bueva playing extremely well, they teamed up there for that easy one. And that's when they started to come back. But I think with, uh, you see the pass from Ravena there, you know, Ravina might be a solution for the Philippines. Don't forget, he averaged more than 20 points per game at the FIBA Asia Cup. So he has uh, unquestionably got the talent uh, to put the ball in the basket. And the question is, uh, is he going to take his shots? And how many minutes is he going to get as Chot Ray searches for that team that's going to give them a lift? There he is. And again, uh, averaging more than 20 points per game at the FIBA Asia Cup this summer where the Philippines started like a house on fire but then kind of faded. So he's got the ball there now, Ravina. Norwood, mid-range jump shot is too hard. And now the ball knocked out of bounds. Fifteen on the shot clock. Blatch comes back into the game. And Fajardo goes out. Three-point attempt. That was short. Just grazed the outside of the net. That was Huang. Blatch takes his time, gets inside, and gets it back to a three-point deficit. Davis also back in the game. Oh, that was just silky smooth from Quincy Davis. Ravina 
Ravina passes it over to Norwood. No, Ravina's got it now, excuse me. Blatch takes the pass from Ravina and puts it up off the glass and in. Huang steps inside the arc, banks it in. Bank is open. And the drive and the foul. So good aggressive play from Kiefer Ravenna. And that's what you have to do. You have to put that Chinese Taipei defense under a little bit of pressure. Play direct. Go hard to the basket. This was him on the previous trip, Ravenna finding Blatch in the middle. So Chang has uh, had to go out of the game with his third foul. So that's a blow for Chinese Taipei. And Ravenna on successive trips down the floor has provided a spark for the Philippines. So it's such a luxury to have such good quality guards as Chot, Chot Rays does have. Bends his knees and oh, he doesn't get that second one to fall. Didn't get any love from the rim. Huang out to Cho. Blatch with the rebound, Ravenna up ahead. And all oh, the drive and the basket from Pogoy. Now it's a two point game. And now the turnover into the hands of Norwood. Is he going to take it all the way? He tried to, he did, but he was fouled. So it was Hugh. Who picks up the personal? That was Roger. That was Pagoy the boy. On the previous trip down. And Norwood misses the second. So still Chinese Taipei have the lead. But since going up by 14, it's uh, most of the play has been owned by the, the team in blue. Now Abueva, oh, goes all the way down, out hustles Chinese Taipei. And then uh, Davis and Chinese Taipei look extremely fortunate there because it looked like they just turned the ball over, fumbled it away. Well, no, I mean, uh, I take that back. Pogoy did step in front of him, impeded his progress, and the ref quite rightly called a foul there. So Pogoy goes out of the game. You've still got Ravenna. You've got Wright in the game for the Philippines. Also, Blatch Norwood. And uh, now Abueva has it. Here he is, Kiefer Ravenna. And the Philippines, Gilas, are in front. Having trailed by 14 points. They are wide awake now, folks. This was Cho. Bounce pass, beautiful bounce pass, but to the wrong player, to Abueva. And that triggered the break, and it was finished off by Ravenna. A great slow motion view of Ravenna going up and laying it up off the glass and in. So Ravenna's got five points. Need a lot of patience. 
Five turnovers for the Philippines, four now for Chinese Taipei, six assists apiece for those two teams. Also the fast break points, six for the Philippines, four for Chinese Taipei. Roger Pagoy is going to sit down. Ravenna, keeper Ravenna guarding the ball. He steals it away. And an unsportsmanlike foul called on Cho to further complicate things. So it'll be two shots and the ball. And I think Cho might be coming out. Look at that hounding defense from Ravenna. And there, Cho, you're not allowed. And Ravenna made sure the referee was going to call that. So Ravenna makes the first. And Cho's just thinking to himself, I've got to play some harder basketball. First of all, I can't take the ball up casually. And then I can't, you know, if he takes it away and goes in for the layup, so be it. Then the seven points, you see three or four at the line to three assist. Andre Blatch now. Oh, just gives it to a boy, but the Philippines are just cruising right now. Here's Chin and draws the foul. Now maybe just maybe now would be a time for Chin to post up without Fajardo in there. Here was uh, Blatch on the previous trip. Defense comes to him and he sees a Bueva. Come on, Chin! I built you up. You got to you got to start doing something. He makes the first free throw. He rattles in the second one as well. So Chinese Taipei are there. I mean, they're only down three points, but they've got to really start picking it up defensively. Philippines haven't even really gotten hot from outside yet, and that could happen. Blatz is going to put one up, and Abueva out hustles the Chinese Taipei to the ball. Ravenna. <laughs> Wright says, I'm right here. Just throw me the ball. Why'd you think I was cutting to the wing? And Ravenna says, my bad. So 32 to 29. I don't know why he would have expected him to go to the left. They can tie it up with a three here, Chinese Taipei, but they go baseline. And great move, but a foul has been called. Looks like a phantom foul. Oh, the foul's on Norwood. He's going to be beside himself. Here it is again. Watch this. Yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit of a tough call on Norwood. See the basketball, the you know the basketball gods have uh, made their ruling. As you see the uh, the missed free throw, but it's okay. These uh, calls are made sometimes. They will uh, they will even out over the course of the game. One of two at the line, two point game. Right. Steps into a long three. Norwood 
with the rebound and Blatch just fumbles it away. And Chinese Taipei, oh, Chinese Taipei did lose it, so they're struggling bringing the ball across midcourt now. It's a couple turnovers. That did not look good. So Ravenna, Norwood go out. You got Wright, Blatch. Pagoy, who's back in on the ball, number 16. Castro and Aguilar. Now it's the Andre Blatch show. Spins, puts it up at the line. Chinese Taipei fall down. Get back up. Now they have another chance to tie it for them or take the lead. And a Matador defense. And Lee just puts it up an easy layup, like a layup drill. Castro for three. Good, and it's fouled. Fouled by Lee. A potential four-point play. Well, you know how we talk about these things evening out. <laughs> so Norwood had the foul called him hit at one end, and there Lee was whistled for one on Castro. Lee, difficult shot. Now Castro. Right, takes the bump. Oh, nice handoff to Davis. Well, Davis having words with the ref. And, and Davis reaches in, forces a Blatch into a turnover. And Blatch hustles back and plays defense. And the ball goes off of Sai. Yeah, it was great camera work. You could see it all happen. I mean, Blatch, instead of uh, sitting back and sulking over his uh, turnover, hustled back and made a play on defense. Castro back outside to right or Pagoy and Pagoy missed. Now the long pass ahead to Lee and Pagoy says, this is my house. Although you could put a hashtag in front of that. Now Pagoy, I guess with that, you have to put him on the SWAT team, don't you? He got a SWAT. He hustled back to play D. But again, Chinese Taipei can nod it at 36. Three and a half minutes to go here in the uh, first half. And three-pointer. They're not going to settle for tying it. They're going to take the lead. And that was Huang. Castro and Davis skies high for the rebound. Bounce pass and it goes and Chinese Taipei with a goal interference. 
now lead it by three. They've had a little recovery here. And Junmar Fajardo is going to re enter the game for Aguilar. So nine assists, you can see, for Chinese Taipei. Eight, make it nine now for the Philippines as Abueva makes that. Lee, oh, just grazed the outside of the net. Yeah, he's saying make the bounce pass. Come on, we've been doing a good job working hard to get good shots. If you just walk down and chuck up a three, run no type of offense, you don't make the defense work, what good is that? Fajardo posting up, goes up, and he gets Davis's third foul. Now Davis needs to know the situation. He's got three fouls. Doesn't want to give away and Dunmar Fajardo uh, very cleverly pulled his arms up and got the foul on Davis. Fajardo's done well today. He comes out of this uh, first half with some credit for the Philippines. He's the guy that really sparked the turnaround. Ravenna back in the game. Putting pressure out on the perimeter. Oh, look at Ravenna hounding him again. Oh, he's nipping at his heels. Chin, however, gets it, goes up a little bit out of control. And that was the end of the shot clock, that buzzer. And good hustle down the floor, Roger Pagoy, the boy. And lays it up, and now it's a three-point lead for the Philippines. Drawing up a play here. Cho comes back in, so he's out of the doghouse and back on the court. <laughs> Probably, uh, you, you would say, the most athletic of the Chinese Taipei, Taipei players. And he's got good basketball skills, Cho. And he can play multiple positions, and now he's going to have the ball in his hands. Cho, the other Cho, and Blatch takes it away from him, but a foul called. One of the fouls on Pogoy. Pogoy says, why is it on me? So the new 14 on the shot clock. Lou was not open, so he gives it to the other Cho, who puts up a three. Well and truly out of the doghouse. 42 apiece, final minute of the first half. What a great game. FIBA Basketball World Cup qualifier. Remember, seven teams from Asia will qualify for the World Cup. These are two that desperately want to make it. Ravenna tries to bank one in. And Cho had a chance to rebound it, but didn't control it. So this is the November window. We also have a February window of games. 
a window at the end of June and beginning of July. So it's great. The national teams coming home to play in front of their own fans. And today it's the Philippines who get to do that. And that whole concept about giving, giving the fans a chance to see their favorite team. Well, that's why we have the, uh, the hashtag, this is my house, that you see in the social media. Flash, open, air ball. Lou triggers a two-on-one break. He's going to take it all the way. Oh, he misses. Now Ravenna. He should hold it, really. And Blatch doesn't look like he wants to hold it. Blatch is, uh, wouldn't say he's had a good first half. He struggled. He's two of six from the floor, four points. Raven is going to come out. Fajardo is coming over to the bench. Norwood comes back in. Now we have the Philippine or Philippines having to play defense as Chinese Taipei have it for what they hope is the last possession. Cho explodes into the lane and again the reach and the ball goes off of him. I think it was a Bueva that got a hand on it and I don't understand. You know you want to take the clock down a little bit more anyway so the Philippines wouldn't have a chance even if you missed it. So why would you make that move with seven seconds left unless you think you're going you're to have an easy shot. First thing we need to do, we need to get uh, the ball inside. If they pressure, huh? make sure we got uh, our guard jeep inside here. Okay, let's get the ball here. Jason and Kiefer. Okay, okay. so we're coming out here inbound, Jason and Kiefer. Screen for each other. Screen for Jason. Para come, coming around. Gets that pass here. Okay, coming down here. Free throw shooting and three-point shooting. A lot more joy for Philippines inside the arc. And there's been more success for the team in white, Chinese Taipei, beyond the arc. And Young Chen is uh, going to come in and play defense here. Keep an eye on right. He can hit it. He's spotting up in the corner. Ravenna gets it to Castro. Well, they had a good shot. 44-42, the Philippines on top of Chinese Taipei at halftime. The numbers, Philippines 14 of 18 at the free throw line. Chinese Taipei out rebounding the Philippines. 10 assists for each team. And turnovers are about the same. One more for Chinese Taipei. However, four blocks for the Philippines. So we're at halftime. We'll be right back. Th thanks for watching.
44-42, the Philippines on top of Chinese Taipei here in Manila. And you know what this is all about, don't you folks? Hashtag, this is my house. This is about the World Cup qualifiers and getting the national teams uh, back home so their fans can watch them play in competitive games. Of course, the Philippines had uh, had, had some home games because they hosted the 2013 FIBA Asia Cup, and they also hosted the 2000 and hosted one of the 2016 FIBA Olympic qualifying tournaments. So they know as well as anybody how special it is to play in front of the home crowds. But until the change in the system of competition and bringing in the new system of competition, there were a lot of home teams. You know, most most national teams did not play meaningful home games in front of their crowds. So. This is all about making these games mean something, you know, not just friendlies, and also about having games throughout the year so it makes it easier uh, for the fans to be able to go watch uh, their national teams play. And uh, for the Philippines, uh, they are 1-0 coming into this game. They won in Japan their opening game. Chinese Taipei, however, lost predictably at home to Australia. Australia, far and away, it looks like the best team in Asia. They were the Asia Cup winners this year. So uh, the Philippines will next, their next game will be Australia. And they do not want to go into that game on the back of a home loss to Chinese Taipei. That would be very, that would put them on very uh, shaky ground, I think, uh, moving forward to the World Cup. There will be seven teams from Asia that qualify for the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2019 in China and also China. So um, you know, the World Cup qualifiers, what would basketball, what would that do for Chinese Taipei? What would that do for basketball in that country if they were to qualify for the World Cup? Well, I mean, they would just be over the moon. So they've come here with a professional approach. They've been, you know, they had a great start. They got up by 14 points. Um, the Philippines came storming back. Now some adversity with... Quincy Davis, the third, picking up three fouls. He's uh, got a, a game-high 16 points, but uh, can they win if Quincy Davis doesn't play at least 12 to 13 minutes of this second half? Well, that is a question. He's going to start, and he's going to have to be clever. And we really haven't seen much from Andre Blash today. I mean, a player of his ilk, a player of uh, the high expectations, the naturalized player. He's got six points and four rebounds and two assists, but oftentimes uh, seems to be trying to do a little bit too much, maybe not in the flow of the offense. So second half underway, the Philippines on top by two, and Sai comes right out and ties it up at 44. Let the drums begin. Jumar Fajardo, one of the best players for the Philippines in the first half. Castro, Blatch from the right corner, short. Fajardo saves it in bounds, but into the corner, and then Blatch reaches around and uh, catches the Chinese Taipei player in the face. Look at this. Steps in front of Chang. <laughs> That's kind of been the game, the way the game is going for Andre Blatch. Two fouls on him. You know, Castro hounding Chang, commits the foul. Chot Ray's looking on, somewhat bemused. And as a reminder, Chinese Taipei came here four years ago at the FIBA Asia Cup and beat the Philippines 84-79. So they do understand what it means to win in this place. And Quincy Davis the third, thinking he was pushed back. But the referee's uh, letting him play. Norwood gets it inside to Fajardo. And offensive foul called against the Philippines. And Chot Reyes is beside himself. And he's knelt in 
disbelief. Look at this. Well, what what I saw was when Fajardo was spinning, he did marginally uh, kind of take his right arm and maybe hook Quincy Davis. Maybe that's what the referee was calling, but not, some refs might not have called that. Now an offensive foul going the other way. And called on Davis. So Chen will have to come in for him. Yep, that is a great call as well. You're not allowed to wrap, to extend that, uh, that arm and wrap it around the defender. So Davis has to come out. And Young Chen comes in. And this is another thing about these World Cup qualifiers. You're getting to see some young talents like Chen. And boy, this is a big opportunity for him now. However, it goes to Fajardo. Ball slips out of his hands. Chang gets inside, puts up a short jump shot. Fajardo, strong rebound. And Blatch's pass intercepted. Ball, they get rid of it. And oh, nice, nope, not a nice finish. Nice miss from Liu. Castro to Blatch. Spins on Chen, gets inside, misses, but Fajardo there to clean up the mess. Blatch just two of eight from the floor. Fajardo now four of six. He has 11 points. Chiang hands it to Sai. Sai's the guy. He puts it up and in. Ties it. Norwood. Excuse me. Uh, Fajardo gets it down low. Blatch has it, gets it back to Fajardo, and it's just the land of the Giants. Smaller Chinese Taipei players didn't have a chance there. Gets it out to Chang. And Blatch with the board. Outlet pass to Castro. Explodes into the paint. Puts it up and in. Four point lead now for Gilas. Lou. Over to Sai again. Blatch again to Castro. He's off and running. It's almost a replica of the play that we just watched. Ball knocked out of bounds. Oh, Castro's explosive. And if he gets into the lane like that, he's going to be tough to stop. And that was uh, Blatch going to work on the young man, the 23-year-old Chang. Liu. Now, numbers. Philippines not getting back on defense. And they give away an easy one. Fajardo. Soft touch. Blatch keeps it alive. Ball knocked out of his hands, out of bounds, and Liu sits down. So Cho's going to come in for him. And 
dump to Pogoy. He flies in, takes the contact, and scores. And the drive in Blatch just swaps it. Three on one break. Pogoy. So Chinese Taipei have to get a timeout as the Philippines all of a sudden start to get a little momentum. That was the finish by Pagoy. Twenty six points coming from the bench today for the Philippines. And uh, thirteen of those belong to Fajardo. And then you have also eight for Pagoy. So they've uh, they've done the business from the bench today. And Ravina also has seven. Actually, I'm seeing 34 bench points. That's strange, yeah. Anyway, they've got a lot of points coming from the bench. Let's just leave it at that. Three-point attempt. Good, wide open. 54-51. And that's an interesting shot. Huang, maybe he can get some looks. Blatch gets it to Fajardo. Takes it back out. Fajardo finds his way in, misses. Scrap for the ball. Fajardo gets it back. New 14, Pagoy over to Castro. He attacks, he scores. The second opportunities, third opportunities. Second chance points, uh, they're killers. Lee goes baseline. He's going to get it to the to Chang now. Good hands from Fajardo. Huang, shot clock winding down. He's got to hurry. Did they get it off? Yes, they did. Just in the nick of time, but they missed. And the drive in, the basket is good. So Norwood, excuse me, uh, Castro is starting to uh, become the main man on offense. And a foul called on the drive. So Lee makes uh, the free throw, and see Castro's out there working hard, trying to get his team to the finish line today so they can set up that 2-0, battle of 2-0 teams uh, next February against Australia. And a miss from Lee, but 
Offensive rebound for Chinese Taipei. Cho puts up a three. Good. Four point trip down the floor. Chinese Taipei not going away. Fajardo fumbles it away into the hands of his teammate, Castro. Now Norwood. Cho, entry pass to Chang, over to Huang in the corner. Good! Well, I've seen it up. I mean, he's got a sweet release, and that ties it up. Two threes from Huang here in this uh, third quarter. Right, entry pass to Blatch. Haven't seen Kiefer Ravini yet. Maybe they need to bring him in. Nope. Why? When you got Castro going in for the reverse layup. He'll need a break eventually, though. Castro's working hard. Good spot from Ching. And Huang nails the three. So Castro is now finally taking a seat. And Ravenna is back in the game. So it's Ravenna, Bueva also in the game. Blatch, Fajardo, and Wright. So Norwood takes a seat as well. Ravenna mm. got to the to the rim but wasn't able to finish. to go in the third quarter, says the man on the Tannoy. An offensive foul called against Chinese Taipei. So it's on Cho. Second team foul on Chinese Taipei here in the quarter. Fumbles it out of bounds. Yeah, he just lost it. Just not having a good game today, Blatch. So another chance for Chinese Taipei to take the lead now. Cho on the baseline, wide open. It's good. So back in front, 61-60. And I'm not sure these Gilas fans know how to respond to this. Fajardo, though, turns and scores and goes to the line for a potential three-point play. Uh, Young Ching uh, got a lesson there. Young Chen playing some D. And 
uh, Aguilar misses. The ball goes out of bounds. Entry pass right out to Ravenna. And Aguilar takes a bump. And now he will go to the line. They're calling it tight down low, that's for sure. So 63-61. And without Quincy Davis the third, he's got the four fouls. Remember, he had three in the first half and then picked up one early in the third quarter. And Chinese Taipei into the lane too early. Aguilar missed again. However, Abueva out hustles the, chi the Chinese Taipei rebounders and gets it. Another chance. Fajardo catches, shoots, and what a killer for Chinese Taipei. Not boxing out. Cost them. Cho with the crowd singing defense, defense silences them with the three-pointer. Ravenna gets in, turns it over, and now, and wow, what a turn of events as Abueva was about to launch a desperation shot with .3 seconds remaining, is fouled by Chang, and he will get three free throws. Here it is. Look, Abueva gets a steal there. Yeah, absolutely. Great call by the ref because he's obviously he's going to shoot because there's hardly any time. And big mistake by Chiang. Here the crowd living and dying on every free throw with Abueva. And this is the second. And it's a difficult, difficult situation for the Philippines now. And you have to say the, the slow start from them has cost them and Abueva misses all three free throws how often do you see that it's crazy enough to get the opportunity that he got to shoot the three free throws and then not to take advantage at all well maybe this is going to be chinese taipei's day however it's gilas leading at 65 64.
Well, some of the highlights of a uh, very interesting third quarter, and and now uh, it's a 10-minute game, effectively. Can Chinese Taipei win a 10-minute game against the Philippines? They've had the great start. They weren't able to press on the advantage, but rather the Philippines fought back and had a, 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 a two-point lead at halftime. But... Chinese Taipei, despite the foul trouble, despite losing uh, Quincy Davis, the third to three to four fouls early in the second quarter, have had a terrific uh, third quarter, and they trail by just one point heading to this final quarter. So Bueva having missed all three free throws at the end of the third quarter starts the fourth and also uh, Davis also comes back out. So we'll see how long he can stay on the floor because he's been a, a foul magnet today. He's got to be careful with his arms. Right has got the right stuff. Castro back in as well. Huang over to Chen now. Chiang, who must feel relieved about Abueva's uh, profligacy at the line. He turns it over. Now Wright bringing it up across midcourt. Loses it out of bounds. Chang again, bounce pass to Davis. You know this is going up. And he was denied by Fajardo. Castro gets it to a Bueva. He's not going to miss it that close. No, sir. Six-point lead. Can this Philippines team step on the accelerator and pull away, or will Chinese Taipei keep it close? Davis. Beautiful spin in, in the paint. Eighteen points. And he's spent a lot of time on the bench in foul trouble as well. Spent most of the second quarter and the third quarter on the bench. Three pointer from right. Second one here in the frame. Cho bumped while shooting the three by Wright. Yep, no question. There can be no argument on that. He's asking, was that a three? So right when they had the momentum, thanks to Wright with uh, two three-pointers, Cho is uh, able to get the foul while launching one from the arc himself. So Cho capitalizes and gets Chinese Taipei closer. Makes all three attempts. The 
coach takes him out as well because he wants to talk to him about his uh, movement on offense. Now for harder over to Castro. And a push down low called on Gilas on a Bueva. See if we can. There he is. Yep. Pushing off on Huang. Well, it gives away a lot of inches inside. So he's got to do something. Chang over to Liu. Shot clock winding down. And Fajardo says, no, not in this house. Abueva drives in, misses. Castro trails on the play and gets the rebound. Now he's going to get it back inside. And Abueva holds up, decides to go back in, misses again. Castro had to beat the shot clock. And really, that was a Bueva shot from the corner. But instead, he decided to try to score on the drive. And now he's committed the foul. So two free throws. And I think a Bueva is going to come out. So Pogoy comes in for Abueva. Abueva leaves with eight points. Pogoy, meanwhile, has eight points. He's back in the game. And shooters bounce. Cho, one of the three Cho's on the team, makes uh, the first free throw. But the second is off. Cho Po Sun plays for Taiwan Beer, and he's got he's 26 years of age. Haven't seen much of him. Now Blatch to Pogoy, and Davis collects the rebound. And then Chang flies in. We have liftoff, folks. Look at that elevation. And back to a one point game. And maybe unfortunate not to get a, a free throw as well. Referee decided uh, just to let play on, let him play on. Now Blatch outside to right. Right goes to work into the corner. Norwood on the baseline, air balls it. Now into the hands of Cho. Chinese Taipei have numbers. Philippines slow to get back. But Cho, instead of attacking, takes the jump shot. And then the Philippines, Norwood loses the ball. Chang feeds it inside to Cho. Cho puts up a difficult shot. Norwood, oh, looked a bit awkward there. Castro, and a block has been called. I don't think that is going to count. Or is it? So that is a costly, costly foul for Chang, who has just left the court with his fifth foul. And that is big, because remember, he just scored on that drive to the basket. Lee comes in for him. So indeed, the basket did count. And the free throw uh, takes it up to 76 72. Now Blatch reaches in, almost gets the steal. 
And offensive foul. Cho Po Chin called for that. So now he has uh, some foul issues, I think. Let's see. No, he's only got two. But Davis does have the four fouls, so that's the one you have to watch. Right from the left wing is good. Seven points the advantage now for the Philippines. I think he can do that about as well, if not better, than anybody else in that Filipino team. And Castro is smart enough that he knows that he's out there, so he's taking a step into the lane and then passing it out as the defense uh, the defense converges on him three point shooting now that was the fifth three for the philippines and the third from right in this quarter fourteen turn of his uh, a piece So that was the latest three pointer to fall for Mr. Wright. And again, Castro knowing that he has got a lethal marksman outside. He finds him. And there's no doubt about it. Three of four from deep for that man. Lou gets it to Davis. Davis calmly sinks the jump shot. Well, he's really brought the he's really brought his scoring to this game. We didn't see it against Australia. And he scored, but not wasn't quite as effective as he was today. Castro to Blatch to right. Back to Blatch. And Philippines wait too long. Pagoy didn't have enough time on the drive. Four minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Chinese Taipei have been one tough customer today, but do they have enough to get to the finish line to come back and win this game? Or are they going to fall to 0 2? Cho for three. Right with the board. And Castro sees an opening, hands it, tries to get it to Norwood. Bagoy brings rain. Show to Davis. Davis blocked by Blatch. Go again. Well, that would have brought the house down. Then Castro fouls Davis to stop the clock. To stop the break. Here he is again. Roger over and out. His foot right behind the arc.
Cho to the other Cho. And that was a powerful move. Admirable. Back to six points. Chinese Taipei uh, not panicking, still trying to run smart plays. And maybe, uh, as Ravenna has it, maybe the Philippines will turn it over or like they did last time. Norwood off. Sai has it. Cho, beautiful pass. Cho to his teammate Cho. And then it leads to a break. The late D from the Philippines. Four point swing. That was a killer. Huang for three. So Wright lays it up and in, and he's been big in this second half. And Ravenna gets in and is able to uh, get the referee to make the foul call. So Davis fouls out. And Ravenna, you can see he kind of jumps into him to make sure, or doesn't really jump into him, rather leans kind of into him and I guess Davis is probably thinking that was a call maybe that just wasn't necessary. Just don't blow the whistle. So Reyes is uh, running out of options. 20 points, nine rebounds for Davis, but out of the game. So Chen comes back in with three, uh, three fouls. Hasn't made any impact whatsoever today, which surprised me because I thought he was uh, doing pretty well against Australia. He saw that, saw that fan. He was getting pretty excited, wasn't he, about Pilipinas. Gilas Pilipinas. Ravenna. So big lead now for the Philippines. 18 of 26 at the free throw line. And uh, they've got their biggest lead of the game. Cho. Well, you know, Chinese Taipei, you have to say maybe this, this score line is not a, ref a fair reflection of how close this game has been. But you have to keep making plays. And uh, they just have haven't been able to make some here in the fourth quarter. Long hits a long one. That's his third three. I'm trying to figure out why the coach hasn't tried to utilize that more. Because Wong has definitely got a good stroke. Masai fouls uh, Ravenna with 13 seconds on the shot clock. So Ravenna comes out, another solid game for him. And it's up to Wright, Fajardo, Blatch, Castro and P Pagoy to, to finish this off. Castro in the lane. Good.
Well, the Philippines have had to play a couple of close games. They were able to survive in Japan, and it looks like they're going to survive at home against Chinese Taipei. Well, that's interesting. 14 offensive rebounds for the Philippines. So contributing uh, to their opportunities. Points in the paint, 48 for the Philippines. 28 Chinese Taipei. So we saw the good and the bad today, more good than bad from Davis. But when you look back at a couple of the fouls that he committed, if he could only have those back, because you know that when, when, you've, uh, when you've got that fourth foul, you might go out on a foul like the one that was called a very weak foul. Uh, Ravenna was able to get the, the, the whistle in his favor. Cho to Cho, gets it back. And good offensive rebound from Huang. Wow, you know, possibly the most impressive player today for Chinese Taipei. He's got 16 points. Chinese Taipei would like to get it even closer in case of a tiebreaker on points. And a foul was called on Cho, so they'll get it back probably, but they might even be further behind. Yeah, clear foul. Probably the steadiest performer in this. Philippines team Jason Castro you pretty much know what he's going to bring to the table game in and game out and that is so crucial for any team and to have it as your point guard it's uh, it's good and you know do the Philippines have the pieces to become a real factor in international basketball I'm not convinced that they are yet but uh, they're certainly good enough to get to the World Cup, the 32-team World Cup. I mean, they'll be 2-0 and after this November window. Uh, you'd have to say they'll be big underdogs against Australia when they play in February. So you know, they, could, they could fall to 2-1. They're going to have to play better than the, what they showed today. Cho goes right down the lane. And I think the Philippines will settle for the seven point win. So 90 to 83, the Philippines give uh, their adoring fans uh, a win, a second straight win in the World Cup qualifiers over Chinese Taipei. Well, Jimmy Alapeg, one of the assistant coaches for the Philippines there, going through the, the line to shake hands. Andre Blatch, what is he going to bring to the table? We just don't know right now. I mean, he didn't bring much today, not to, not to the lofty standard that he sort of set for himself at the FIBA Basketball World Cup in 2014. Well, you heard the words of Gabe Norwood. It was ugly, but a win's a win. 
And while that's true, again, they're going to have to start playing better. 53% inside the arc, 27% beyond it. 46 rebounds for the Philippines, 37 for Chinese Taipei. 10 blocks for the Philippines. And, you know, if you, if you start slow, as they did, and you play like that against a better team, it's going to cost you. So, yeah, you win ugly. A win is a win. But you're not going to be getting the big wins that you need unless you start to play better and you're ready to play from the beginning. You're seeing the leading scores, 20 points for uh, Castro, 20 points for Davis. Blatch, you know, I was a little bit hard on him, but he did have the, the 14 rebounds. Uh, to go with his six points, but he was two of nine from the floor. And Fajardo had the 17. Pagoy had the 11. So after the, after the November window, these are the standings. Australia and the Philippines 2-0 each, and Japan and Chinese Taipei are, are both 0-2. And, and I think what you probably would have to say is that while the Philippines are 2-0, um, they're not, they're not they have not guaranteed themselves a place in that second round yet. They've, you know, they could easily lose to Chinese Taipei if they're not ready up in Chinese Taipei. And they didn't beat uh, Japan convincingly either. So they need to be ready to play the next time they go up against those two teams. And of course, before that, they'll play Australia. And I don't think there's any doubt about Australia. I think they'll be they're gonna they're gonna finish top of this group. That's my prediction. And I would see them also uh, you know, clinching that spot in the World Cup. So the question is what are the other six teams that are gonna join them? And just as a reminder, you've got in the at the World Cup in 2019, China, they will be hosting it, so they will already have a place. So they'll be joined by seven other Asian teams. And you've got 12 teams that will be coming from Europe. You'll have seven teams coming from the Americas. You'll have five teams coming from Africa. It will be the biggest and the best basketball tournament of all time. It is going to be exciting. And uh, if the World Cup qualifiers are any indication, uh, this whole process is just going to be amazing for the next couple of years. So, we're glad you're able to watch this game. And don't forget, we've still got some other games uh, coming. I know that Iran are going to be in action uh, soon against Qatar. Also, Kazakhstan will be going up against Iraq. Remember, Iraq got the upset win over Iran. That's the type of thing I'm talking about. Uh, the unpredictability factor, uh, especially when uh, teams are playing at home and they're, they have the benefit of some of their home, their home fans there. Now, there will also be other games coming today in other regions of the world as well. So a lot of basketball to be played, and that means a lot of basketball to be watched. So as we look at the final highlights here, just as a reminder, the Philippines getting 20 points from Jason Castro-William, 17 from Junmar Fajardo, 11 apiece from, from Wright and Pagoy. And uh, Wright was probably the guy that, that sealed the deal with his performance in that fourth quarter. But uh, Fajardo was solid in that he was the man that, that the Philippines jumped on his back when they started to come back in the first half. And throughout the game, uh, it was uh, Castro that was solid. Now, who stood out for Chinese Taipei? Uh, a whole cast of characters. Davis. Quincy Davis led them with the 20 points, but he fouled out. He also had the nine rebounds. Um, Captain Sai had six points, four rebounds. 17 points uh, for Cho, who uh, played 23 minutes in the end. He was three of seven from three-point range, number six Cho. And you had Huang, who really stood out today, uh, playing just under 19 minutes. He had 16 points, and he buried... Four of six from three-point range. He was uh, he was a weapon. So, all in all, uh, a solid a solid performance from Chinese Taipei. Uh, they just did not get the stops they needed to in the fourth quarter. 
And remember the words from Gabe Norwood, it was an ugly win, but a win is a win, and you can't dispute that. They have uh, finished 2-0 in the November window. Thanks for watching, everybody. The Philippines win it over Chinese Taipei, 90-83. to